listening to the Literary Entrepreneur Podcast, Episode 20. Okay, welcome to the Literary Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Paolo Moody, and I'm excited to have as our guest today, Shadris Denise. She is going to talk a little bit about her literary journey. Uh, we're going to hear about some of the books that she has currently released. And as always, we love talking to authors about the business of writing, so we'll find out her take on some of the things that she's come across in her journey of book promotion. So, Shadris, thank you for joining us, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Um, I always like to start off a you know, pretty casual conversation, so tell us a bit about you, you know, what are some of the things you enjoy doing? I love to read, of course. You know, most writers tend to, you know, like to read. I also love traveling. I am a shoe fanatic, so I love to shop. I'm pretty much just, you know, relaxing at home, hanging out with my friends and family, just, you know, simple things, bowling, swimming. You know, I like I like to be outside of my house. I'm not a homebody at all, so I love being in the house. Outside the house, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, th- th- nothing wrong with that. And I was reading in your bio, now you're really into the art. You happen to be a graphic designer. And I was looking at your book covers. I was wondering, do you do your own book covers or any type of design work for other authors? I actually did the book cover for my first book, which is Disturbia, my book of poems. And then as far as the second book, my publishing company actually handled that aspect of getting the book out and everything like that. Uh, but, yeah, I do I do other stuff like invitations, flyers, things like that. If people ask me, then, you know, I kind of freelance and, and do that as well. So, yeah, I do a little bit of all of it. Okay, so if an author is listening to this and they approach you, um, would you be willing to try a book cover or to help them with their book promotion pieces like a poster or a bookmarks? Sure, yeah, most definitely. So tell us a bit about your literary journey. Uh, what was your first book? Was you say it was Disturbia? Yes, my first book was Disturbia, and it was pretty much um, a book of poems and letters. I've written about five books of poems, and so I, that was my first one that I decided to go ahead and publish. And so it, it's pretty much my poems are somewhat similar to novels. I try to create them and format them in a way to where they tell a story. So it's just it's pretty much a collection of poems and letters and things like that that basically just tell a story and from beginning to end. Okay, so so you made a definite choice to self publish or were you thinking about looking for a publisher at the time when you knew you wanted to um, create the book? When I well the first book actually I, I never intended to publish anything. Um, I wrote poetry for therapy. That's all it was for me. I enjoy writing it. It was a way for me to, you know, release my feelings, put my feelings on paper, and I just enjoyed it from that sense. My mom basically for years worked my nerves about publishing and putting my poetry out there, and I eventually decided to just go ahead and take a stab at it and try it out. And so I put out the Serbia. And what was the process for you? Um, did you find any challenges along the way when you decided to, to self-publish? Well, once I uh, researched how to do it, I actually had a friend who I had went to high school with. He had already self-published, so I had pretty much just went through various channels of people that I already knew had went through the self-publishing process. I kind of just went on the Internet and researched, you know, how to self-publish, the steps in which you take once you self-publish and things like that. 
and it was pretty much easy from there. I can honestly say that I went through Creative Space, which is an Amazon design platform that helps authors who want to, you know, try out self-publishing. So I went through that, and Creative Space was really, really step-by-step, simple. It kind of guided you through different things like that. So it wasn't extremely difficult for me. Oh, good. And that's so good to hear because um, I'm a literary service provider, so I have a lot of people who are always asking me questions. And I'm always mm -hmm. thinking, there's Google people. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, the, the Internet is everything. Like, people, I didn't realize how much the Internet was. It's everything. So, yeah. So that's so you went out and you researched the process and you, you talked to other people. So that, and that's a good first step, you know, because a lot of people try to go to people who who published and try to get a lot of information where, you know, sometimes it's not convenient for that other person to help you. So that's definitely mm -hmm. a good point to do your, your own research. So yeah. you have one other book that, that I believe, you tell me, what was the publishing date on your novel and what was the title of it again? My, the name of my, my fiction novel is Who Do You Love? And it came out summer of 2014. It was released, I believe, in July. And so I actually went to a publishing company for that novel. Okay, so what was the difference? What what happened with, did you think it was easier to go to the publishing company this time around versus self-publishing? What was the difference between those books? I will say that it was easier simply because a lot of the workload is taken off of you as an author as far as the formatting and the editing and the cover design and the uploading and the getting distributed and things like that. Like all of that part of the business, it was a big relief and it was a lot easier to just be able to write and then pass on the rest of the process to the publishing company all the while still managing and overseeing. So it's almost as if when you go from self-publishing to a publishing company, you pretty much just go from being the full-fledged company to somewhat just managing because, of course, you're going to edit it and make sure. I mean, I do anyway. I edit it at least twice to make sure before I pass it off to the editor. And then... Mm -hmm. um, once you do that, then they do the, you know, final edits, they do the cover, they do the formatting for Kindle and Nook and paperback and all that kind of stuff. So that part of it I was actually glad to have taken off of myself because when you self-publish, you have to do all of that. So it was a relief not to have to do that this time around. So I guess it just it depends. It's a lot more, I guess, costly when you self-publishing versus when you go through a publishing company. I mean, yeah, they get a percentage of your sales, but when you think about the money that you're going to spend on, if you don't know how to design your own cover, you're going to end up paying somebody to do that. You're going to have to, you know, edit it, and you're going to have to pay to get it distributed and get copies and things like that. So either way it goes, the percentage, I mean, if you do the math, the percentage that you're going to, that they're going to get from the book is pretty much what you're going to spend anyway as a self-published author. So, I mean, being that I've experienced both ends of it, I can say that unless it's just something I really want to put out for myself, I'll just go through the publishing company and let them do all the, the extra legwork, you know. Well, that's interesting that you said unless it's something I want to put out myself. What In what case would you say a person would decide it's best for them to self-publish rather than going through a traditional publisher's a certain type of book or genre that you think? I, it's really hard to say um, because, like, for instance, with I think you would have to determine the genre of book that you have and if you're a publishing company that you may be with or you want to go with, actually publishes that type of book because some publishing companies are not across the board where they publish all genres of books. They have specific genres that they publish. So 
I would definitely research and find out what books your publishing company public, you know, will put out, will distribute. And if the book that you want is not something that they do, then as long as your contract, you know, allows, I would just still publish. Mhm. Mm okay. Well, I, I'm I'm like you. I'm a bit of a hybrid author too. I have a traditional publisher, and then I had a book. It's a, a kind of a cozy mystery that I decided. You know, I just I kind of want to own that. I wanted to do that all myself. So you're you're right. It, you kind of make the decision based on which publisher you're you're looking to get with, or really if that book project. It's kind of speaking to you like you just you need to own this and kind of keep your a little bit of control over it. But either mm -hmm. way, whether you self-publish or you're traditionally published, at least this is what I found, and you tell me if you agree, that book marketing a lot of times still comes on you as the author. Have you found that to be the case? Very, very much so. And that either way it goes, whether you are with a publishing company or you are by yourself, you have to promote the book. And I've noticed that with, even if you're with a, I mean, a lot of times if you're with a pretty well-known, you know, like Random House and things like that, if you're with big publishing companies, you know, they will have a marketing and promotions, you know, department that will do that. But I've found that the publishing companies are only going to market so much because they have other authors that they actually have to also cater to. So you you can't get, you know, complete and total personalized service. You know, they can't completely cater to you. So, yeah, I, that's the difference that I found out with my first book and my second book. It was promotion. Promotion and advertisement and marketing makes all the difference in your book sales. It really, really does. Because if you don't, you can have a really good book, but if nobody knows that your book is really good, then it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I've really come to find out that marketing and promoting is definitely something you have to um, definitely do. And so what are some, some book promotion um, things that you that you've done that you find have been helpful. Like some um, authors still like to do offline. They still like to do book festivals, and then there's some mm -hmm. authors that they, they like to just do, you know, online where they kind of just stick with social media. So, what are there any combinations that you found have worked for you? I actually feel, um, honestly, a little bit of everything works online mm -hmm. and offline. Some people, you can only reach so far with social media, and mm -hmm. you can only reach so far with word of mouth. So I feel like a mix of everything, putting yourself in different areas and different, you know, places allows you to get yourself out there. Like, I, I do word of mouth, and I also do, you know, the podcast and the the blog talk radio, and I also do the social media, and I do the book signings and the book festival. It's any avenue that you are able to place yourself in, or you know, down to where you can get your information out there. I would, I would just take it. I wouldn't, pretty much, I wouldn't put myself in one specific category because then you're limiting yourself. So, as many places as I can put myself in to tell everybody about my book, I take advantage of it. And it's, it's all work because it's, I mean, what, especially the free stuff, you know, it's as much free opportunities as you can take advantage of to get your work out there, especially as a new author and you really trying to get people to know who you are, I, I would take advantage of that because marketing and advertising is expensive. I mean, we all know that companies spend billions that's a billion-dollar industry. But as a new author, you don't have that kind of money. So, you know, word of mouth, social media, various sites that allow you to post your work on there for free, you know, all of those things are something that I definitely would recommend people, you know, take advantage of. Awesome. So, um, Jess, I have a couple more questions for you. For a person who still is we're kind of at the beginning of the year as we're doing this interview, 
So someone may have come into this new year thinking, oh, this is the year I'm going to write the book. What are some things, and, and tell me, well, tell me about your writing process. Well, you told me earlier that your mom really encouraged you to put your poetry together and to publish a book. So how would you encourage someone who has this goal on their list of writing a book? What, what would you say to them? I would just say get started. Put yourself out there and just, you know, take that leap of faith because a lot of times you can plan and research and plan and research and plan and research to the point where you look back and two years have passed you by and you've been planning and researching and you haven't pretty much accomplished the goal of what you're trying to accomplish. So I would say, you know, give or take three or four months, you know, roughly, of researching, you know, making a decision on what type of book you want to put out, the genre, and make a decision on the self-publishing or if you want to go with a publisher company and if that's something you want to do, that take, that definitely takes research because you want to make sure you get with the right person, the right company, so that they don't take advantage of you, they appreciate you, they help cultivate you, and you really get your work out there. And I would say once you do that, then go ahead and put it out because you're never going to take that next step until you take that first step, which is putting your work out there. So I would just say go for it. I mean, because once I put it out there, it was almost like, you know, whew, okay, that was a goal accomplished. And then after that point, then I could move forward with, okay, where do I want to go from here? Okay. So, and, and speaking in terms of that, you have a book out, Who Do You Love? And I understand you're working on, is it the sequel to Who Do You Love? Actually, yes. I'm, well, I'm working on a couple of things at the same time. I am working on the sequel to Who Do You Love, which probably won't be out until probably later on, maybe fall of this year. But mm -hmm. coming up next month, I have a mini series. I like to call it a mini soap opera because that's kind of the way I'm formatting it. But I'm, I have a mini series called um, The Side Chick Chronicles. And the first one should be dropping in, I want to say, maybe three weeks, maybe three or four weeks, tentatively three or four weeks. Okay. And just a little bit about your writing process. Do you kind of do a sea of the pants type of writing, or do you outline your work? Ah. I, I, I do a little bit of both. Like, I, I have outlines. Like, once I, I sit down, I kind of format on, okay, how do I want this to go? It's, I, I do more character outlines. Like, mm -hmm. who is this character? What is this character's story? Where do I want this, you know, this plot? What, how do I want this character to grow? And who do I want this person to become? It's just things like that. Now, I also have um, post-it notes everywhere. Like, I, I have, <laughs> I, I will write on a, <laughs> I have post-it notes. I have notes on my phone, notes on my tablet. So, it just depends. I mean, I'll write on anything and, you know, throw it in my purse and, you know, make a mental of notes of, you know, put it on the computer later on. So, I do a little bit of both. So, I can't say I'm... Um, pretty much honed in on one particular type of writing. I do a little bit of both. Okay. And that makes it I actually do that too. I like to outline and then once I get into the chapter I kind of kind of free flow. And I always tell people outlining isn't as rigid as you might think it it, it is because the character eventually takes over anyway, so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And that's pretty much what happens. It's like I could start off with an outline and that's just you know, that's just the foundation. But then after that, it's, it's like it takes over, and eventually, you know, you look back at your outline and be like, well, this is not what I wrote in the beginning, but, you know, it just kind of gave you a, a launching point, you know, so. Exactly. Well, Shadris, it's been great talking to you. I don't want to um, leave without you telling us where we can find you online to, you know, keep up with you. Well, I am on Facebook as Authoress Shadows Denise. That's my author page. Or you can look me up on my personal page. It's just simply Shadows Denise. Instagram and Twitter, I am, same thing, Shadows Denise. 
And my website is IamChatnessDenise.com, and I'm also on Good Goodreads as well as LinkedIn as Chatness Denise. I pretty much just use my name to brand myself, so you can pretty much pull me up everywhere. <laughs> Awesome, very good. Y'all are so authors. Your name is your brand. So that's great. I'm, I'm glad to see that. Oh, Shad, it's just been great talking to you on the podcast today. Um, we are looking forward to your project coming out, and we wish you much success on it. Thank you very much, and thank you again for having me, Ty. I look forward to maybe coming back on your herd again. <laughs> sure, not a problem. We look forward to having you. Thank you once again for listening to the Literary Entrepreneur Podcast. You can listen to the official podcast feed on the literaryentrepreneur.com or subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud.com, Spreaker.com, or you can find us on YouTube.com. Just as a reminder, I want to let you know before you leave us for today that you're more than an author. You are a literary entrepreneur. Writing and marketing books is a business. Let's learn how to attract readers to your books together. <laughs>